Hello. Yeah, I'm the one that made the dog for Nick. Can I make him low carb sugar cookies? I mean, I guess that makes sense for him to have with his coffee. All right, I'll... Where do you go? Elves. And so we just make our sugar cookies low carb, keto, and gluten free. He begins with a pitcher and a scale. To this, he adds the finely ground seeds of the almond tree, as well as the flour from a bunch of lovely coconuts, sitting in a row. A teaspoon of baking powder and a pinch of kosher salt. Then he proceeds with the finest metal forged whisk from the Keebler Kingdom. The ingredients are mixed well enough until it resembles sand and then set aside. In its place, a large bowl is set. Seven tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature is cut and added. The remaining knob is butter used elsewhere. Under no circumstance should you melt the butter, it should simply be softened. Then, the sweetener. In this case, he's using what appears to be erythritol laced with asbestos. <coughs> to clean the mixture, he'll be using this 1970s hand mixer. He could use the stand mixer, but they are a bit too heavy, and it's been a while since he's worked out. Obviously. He begins on the lower setting to prevent a disaster, and slowly brings it up to speed. Every so often, it is prudent to stop the machine and scrape the sides with a silicone spatula. After all, we want to ensure that all the erythritol crystals are encased in butter fat thus ensuring the creamy. He adds two teaspoons of extract of vanilla and adds a special ingredient, almond extract. Although optional, he finds it adds tremendous flavor, if only he could appropriately pour the measurement. If you decide not to eyeball it, about a teaspoon. Then, a large chicken egg. Hmm, that's weird. He somehow manages to crack the egg with his non-dominant hand and successfully add it to the bowl. The mixture is fired up once more to perform the sole duty for which it was engineered. When the mixture is rather evenly combined but looks like it's a bit broken, he begins to add his dry ingredients. Working in thirds, he utilizes the hand mix until the dough becomes too stiff. The switch is then made to a sturdy spatula, but even it will eventually succumb to the superior mixing tools that evolution has designed. The hands. Those dirty, gloveless hands. Then, with a piece of parchment paper or silicone mat, he places it onto his cutting board. The dough is then turned out onto the board. Maybe. Maybe not. There we go. Then it then moves to fashion the dough into a round, flat disc. Something that resembles a monstrous cookie. However, to improve this disc, he places the dough with the lining onto a baking sheet. Then using a piece of parchment paper, lays it over top. With this embarrassingly dirty and stained baking tray, he places it and presses down. This creates a much flatter, much more compact disc. However, he wants the dough at roughly the thickness of his wooden spoon, so he uses it as a rough guide. <laughs> the flattening process is repeated and it results in a larger, flatter disc of dough, a precursor to a massive smiley face. Afterwards, he covers it with a paper and cling rack to prevent the dough from drying out. This then goes into the icebox for at least one hour. In the meantime, he removes a box of cream cheese. Jesus <laughs> Creepy cross-eyed <sighs> No, they're in the fridge. It takes some time, man. Sure. By the way, have you seen chicken? Really? Alright. The cream cheese is set on a plate and onto the counter to come to room temperature. Then he cleans. Because... ants. He preheats the oven to 325 degrees American and removes his chilled disc of dough from the refrigerator. The dough is now tough enough to endure the design cutouts. He begins with this faceless mold of a man supposedly from ginger. Working as efficiently as possible, he presses the cookie cutter firmly, removes the men, and sets them aside. For a round cookie, he simply uses a small cup with an appropriately sized circumference. He presses firmly and rotates to ensure a good separation. Thin brim glasses works best, however, any round edge will work. Leftover pieces of dough are removed and added to a temporary discard heap. This mound of seemingly wasteful dough is molded into a ball and then fashioned once again in the shape of a disc. Using the same piece of parchment paper, he creates a parchment dough sandwich and... Skillet, not just the workhorse. Also a hammer. And a weapon. As he peels back the paper, the dough is back to its familiar shape. He makes more cutouts and repeats the process until he has a single, tiny 
cookie. Okay, Using his old school Tetris skills, he arranges them on the board as best he can. A little tight. But not too tight. Into the oven they go for at least 15 minutes until the edges start to brown. Come on, creepy elf. While the timer ticks down, he will prepare his frosting. In a large bowl of sorts, he adds his soft and cream cheese. To this, he adds two tablespoons of the erythritol smoke. <coughs> the last ingredient is some of the very eggnog he had prepared for Nick. Eight tablespoons of the non-alcoholic version are added. Then, once again, it's time for the hand mixer. And in its pay for the day, the hand mixer works to smooth the troublesome cream cheese and yield a super smooth frosting. At the same time, Dennis attempts to find a man on which he can work autonomously so that he can check on the cookies. Although progressing on their journey, they have not yet started to brown, and thus need more time. He taste tests the frosting. To sweeten it will overpower the cookie, but it's just right. The cookies are removed and placed under the counter. To expedite the cooling process, he carefully removes them and places the soft baked goods onto a cooling rack. The cookies must cool before he attempts to frost them, otherwise the frosting will behave like an avalanche. However, these cookies are perfectly edible at this time. Either way, he sets them on the cutting board and allows them the space and time to cool. Ten minutes later, he returns to room temperature sugar cookies. Using an unlikely tool, he begins to spread the frosting on the baked goodies, of which no gingerbread were harmed in this process. The screen cheese frosting will not harden like traditional royal icing. However, he is more concerned with flavor, which is why he is using ground cinnamon as a sprinkled replacement. This adds both flavor and color. However, be not alarmed, he also has sprinkles of the green and red variety. Just be aware that these sprinkles are in fact sugar and will increase the carb count of these beautiful cookies. Although he would love to sit and continue decorating the remaining cookies, he has somewhere else he has to be. Due to an oddly cold winter in Florida, he dons as thick as jacket, authentic apparel of those who take the black. He grabs some cookies for the road and heads out. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters who helped make this channel possible. Until next time, eat well.